Hey guys, welcome back to Day to Day Chess. This is Sabina, and as I promised to you a couple of days ago, I've decided to um, compile a couple of my games from the first FIDA World Online Women Blitz Chess Championship 2015. Such a long name, but definitely every single word there is very important. So this year, FIDA came up with this. Um, a um, new idea of uh, creating a program, a software where people would be able to play online, and um, they've um, they've created also the first uh, world championship for women. And as soon as I found out about this opportunity, um, we were discussing with uh, with my mother and my sister, and we said we have to all play and try to qualify. This would be amazing, and of course, an opportunity to see each other because. You know, I live in the United States, my mom, my parents live in Romania and my sister is studying in Great Britain. So we are on three in three different countries. It's, it's kind of tough to, to make, uh, um, you know, to find a way to see each other. So um, we said, OK, let's prepare for this. Let's try to play and uh, uh, try to qualify. <laughs> and see each other um, wherever the final was going to take place. We knew that it was going to be in a set location and probably the reason the organizers decided to do that was because, you know, you want to check a little bit who is playing, you want to check to make sure the people who are signing up for the event are really the players who are playing and of course you want to avoid any kind of cheating going on. So that was definitely um, a really great idea. And, um, the organizers, um, I was interviewed at the tournament actually and they, uh, and was asked if I any time I was worried that somebody might be cheating and uh, my response was simple, I don't think so because if they were, they probably, uh, if somebody cheated in this event, they probably were caught. Uh, there are always ways to, to check uh, whether people are cheating uh, when we are in real life, of course. It's much easier, but online as well, there are computers that can double check things and there are specific programs that um, um, review players' games and see, you know, statistics. Uh, a bunch of things are involved and um, that thing didn't happen. So I was not uh, playing this in any way with a fear in my mind. I was just playing, enjoying the game and praying to play as well as possible to be able to qualify. Now, some of you might know, and if you are um, checking, if you already checked, if not, be sure to check my website, day-to-day -day cooking um, of a grandmaster. Um, you have the uh, link in the description below. You will see that I have, uh, as a child, I have uh, won many medals in European championships for Blitz and Rapid. So I always prefer to play those <laughs> the normal games. Somehow I was more successful in those. Um, I don't know why, don't ask me, but um, anyway, so that happened. So I, I was a little bit co more confident than usually um, uh, with this tournament, and I gave it a shot. So I qualified, and then I played the semifinals, and I was a little bit worried I didn't qualify, but somehow, you know, it worked out. I qualified, and I was invited to play in this first and very prestigious event, for which I'm very thankful um, to the organizers and to FIDA, of course, for having created this for women, giving us the opportunity of playing um, outside of, um, I mean, just from home, you know, you don't need to travel to spend money and, you know, it's tough as a woman chess player to to find ways to, to make a living out of chess unless you are, you know, you can dedicate, you have the, the funds to dedicate your life to it. So, um, anyways, um, I was very happy to have qualified and there I was suddenly playing. I was the last seeded of, of the tournament according to the ratings and so um, my uh, expectations were not high. And um, let me show you the final standings of the tournament before I start showing you the games also. So the final standings were um, Grandmaster Harika Dronavali won the tournament. Um, she was she shared actually the first place with Nana Zagnidze, but because of a little tie break <laughs> difference, uh, Harika won. So uh, con congratulations to her. I already told that told her that in person, and I had the opportunity of uh, playing after the tournament. You would think that once the tournament is over, people are out of chess. Uh, they don't want to see chess for some time. Well, that was not the case for us. We actually started playing some tam uh, tandem games. You know when 
two players were playing versus two and one move um, per person <laughs> and supposedly one of the teams was, uh, would win and uh, I was lucky enough to play with her in the team so I'm very grateful for that. Maybe at some point I will ask her um, to accord me an interview uh, if she has the opportunity. I'm sure some of you would like that. If you do like it, be sure to give me th thumbs up, um, write me something in the comment and I'll be sure to, um, to try to contact different people and start interviewing. I haven't done that yet, so we'll see how it turns out. Uh, third was uh, former world champion Alexandra Kostenyuk. I lost against her actually 2-0. Uh, not very happy about that. Um, both of the games I, 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 I thought I had okay positions and I just blundered uh, material. Against Harika also, I didn't mention that, I lost 2-0. Against Nana Zagnese, actually, I was lucky in the second game. I uh, I won. Uh, I won a, you know, beautifully. Uh, she blundered the queen, and then okay, um, I'll definitely be showing that um, part for today. Against Valentina Gunna, I also lost to zero. Uh, Olga Zimina, a top Italian chess player, she um, um, finished fifth, and uh, I made one one against her. Then Irina Vasilevich from um, Russia. I was seventh. I think it's quite decent c considering what I told you that I was the last seeded of the tournament. Uh, Wounds Grandmaster uh, Adriana Nikolova from Bulgaria. 1-1 one, one with her. Ruth Madmini, she's a very strong chess player from India, international master. I believe she has one or two Grandmaster norms. And uh, she's... Uh, She's been playing very well lately, but she had just come from the um, Indian uh, Women's Championship and maybe she was tired with the flight and everything and has not had a very good tournament this time. And, okay, 10th finished uh, uh, international master Sofia Kvetadze, another player who was not in her best shape in this tournament. So. It always happens this way. Some people are in better shape than others, and you never know how it's going to happen to be, specifically in women events, somebody would say. But anyways, done with the talking. I think I, I've done um, too much of the top, to, um, talking, so hopefully uh, most of you are still here. You, haven't dis uh, you have not decided to just uh, leave this um, video. Uh, but uh, let's just check some of my games. I think I have some. I don't want to go through the entire games. I want to go over important moments and kind of give you some kind of wrap up of some tactics that I missed or I um, my opponents missed. So here would be the first position. This is my game. I had black against international master Olga Zimina. And in this position, she had just played knight g5, of course, to threaten mate in h7. And I played g6, which is, of course... Uh, in the position, I thought, the natural response, right? It just try to stop the mating threat. And here, uh, I would like you to pause the video and try to find the way for white to, um, to simply win this. Okay, so my opponent in this position went for rook c1, which seems like a natural approach to the position. The c file is open. We want to make sure we get the control over it, and black doesn't have any ways of getting active and why would be the only one getting active here but there is an even better move it's something that both me and my opponent missed and um, what do we have to look at in this position white has more space and blacks knights and rook are really stuck on the last rank so what you have to look for is this rook in f8 being trapped there and, of course, there's no way to actually win it, but the problem is that if white plays queen c5, which would have been the correct move in this position, I mean, for white to just simply win Im instantaneously, um, black has no way to defend against knight takes h7. There's no way to move the knight and the rook in the same time, and, I mean, if, if black moves the knight, I mean, where do you go? Knight g7? I just take in h7 and then knight f6 is coming as well. So here my opponent could have just won the game after rook c1. Rook c1 was uh, was a good move as well, but it's it's not as you know dynamic. And so uh, I played h6, chasing that knight away, and now 
you know, white cannot really utilize the superiority of that knight, and I was able to get my knight away, improve the position of it, and um, eventually the game ended in a draw. So you have to be very cautious and always um, take care and be aware of weaknesses in your position and tactical tricks. That's why it is so important for us to um, see as many tactical positions as possible because uh, it doesn't matter if we really, it doesn't mean that if we see so many positions we're going to be able to, to know the answers when we're playing, but what it means is that when we see positions like this we're going to know to feel that something is wrong in the position and here that rook in f8 not being protected uh, would have you know brought white the win immediately so this is what my opponent missed and eventually we ended up making a draw um the next game that i want to show you the next position is um here this uh, this game this in this position I had white actually against her again and in this position I played rook a to c1 and in that position is about uh, equal the pawn structure is symmetrical white might be slightly slightly better because this bishop in c5 is hanging and white already has the um, control over the d file the queen is let's say a little bit more active than this one and specifically this bishop is, is a little problem so maybe in this position I could have thought of playing some h4 chasing the queen away e7 is the only square and now maybe think of some rook d7 to get even more active on the seventh rank um, and for example now if black would play queen f6 now we could play rook c1 you know, like, we can't take the bishop because our rook is hanging, but in this position it feels like white is getting a little bit of the initiative. And, for example, if rook c8, we can go queen g3, for example. Bishop f8. Um, I believe, I believe in this position, we don't need to trade the, the rooks because this rook is badly placed. We don't want to make trades, even for winning a pawn, you know, even if I were to, to win that pawn, I would not want to make the trades because black's rook in b8 is badly placed, so probably I'll play rook d1, white would have a slightly better position. But this is not the reason why I'm showing you this game. The reason I'm showing you this game is that here I play rook ac1, which seems like a natural move as well, just, you know, finishing up the development, bringing a rook on the open file, and here my opponent blundered. She went rook f to c8. The only uh, move that would keep the position about equal would probably be b6 just keeping the bishop you know strengthening the bishop in c5 and not allowing white to to think of any kind of pushes at some point and you know just keeping the position solid but I, my opponent went rook f to c8 and here i saw this idea i don't know how i didn't play it i saw it and it's a very typical idea so hopefully you guys will pause the video here and try to find the winning move for white. Okay, so I suppose you're you're back, and um, saw the move that I missed here. Rook takes c5. A very simple <laughs> tactical idea because if black, you know, you would think I'm taking a, a bishop. Obviously, black cannot take the queen because I'm taking black, and I just have a piece up. That's something that I saw immediately. But I thought black would take back in c5 and I just lost um, an exchange because what do I do now? But the thing is I have a rook d8 check which is a typical idea to try to um, chase away the rook from you know, the protecting of the queen, indirectly protecting the queen, and now of course winning the queen. This is something typical that we normally see. My problem was that black would play here king h7, and I thought, okay, black plays king h7, and I stopped. Of course, the time was not sufficient to calculate everything, but when you are so familiar with ideas like this, I, sh you know, you should not be missing what I just missed here. After king h7, there's simply queen takes e5, right, utilizing that pin, and after queen uh, rook takes e5, rook takes b8, 
And there's nothing to worry about rook c1 because we can simply play king f1 and white is winning. So I missed such a beautiful idea in that position after rook c8 I played queen g3. And after the trade of the queens in this position white cannot hope for any uh, way to win the game. So a big miss for me in this um, in this game. But like I said, okay, we're learning from our, our mistakes. It's, it was a game, you know, <laughs> what to do. Now another another position that I'd like to show you is um, this position, which I actually uh, played against whom do you think? Against the uh, world champion, the Blitz Fide Arena uh, world champion, Harika Donavali. And I had this position on the board. And now stop pause the video and try to evaluate the position and then uh, wonder how come I was able to lose a better, maybe even winning position here. Well, I have no idea how. Don't ask me. I will show you in a second. But uh, try to learn from my mistakes and do not repeat them. So why is white better in this position? Well, because this pawn in e2 is not sustained by anything. So if white manages to win that pawn, white should be able to, of course, you know, win the game. I have um, two pawns versus one here, so I can create a passed pawn. And okay, maybe not win, but okay, have little chances to win. Eventually, it would probably finish in a draw. First mistake that I made in this position was g4. I was worried that if I play king g2, which is the natural response in this position to play king f3 and, you know, win that pawn, my opponent would play g4, and after capture, capture, I am stuck, I will never be able to get that pawn, and goodbye. Obviously, I did not consider f3, or maybe I did, and I thought that my opponent could play bishop d4, and now... Um, I won't be able to, to take that pawn, but I have no idea what I was thinking about, because after f takes g4, I have just freed the f3 square, and I can come king f3, king takes e2, and here I'm just winning. So I just had some wrong thoughts in my mind, so obviously after f3 my opponent wouldn't play bishop d4, probably would play maybe g takes f3 or h5 in this position, but really, again, there's nothing to worry about because I can just go king f2, win the pawn, and um, draw is a minim, minimum <laughs> result in this position. So I, I could not be thinking of losing here. Well, what to do? Sabina, instead of playing king g2 like normal people, went for g4, which is one of the moves that sometimes brought me the win against strong players, but definitely not in this position. My opponent capture, capture, and play bishop f4, obviously trying to eliminate my bishop to promote. So bishop e1 seems natural, h5, and here Sabina made a big blunder. After f3, uh, white is simply losing because we'll never really get the chance to win this pawn in e2. And there will be two pawns um, going for the queen. Instead of this f3, Simply capture, you know, be cautious when you're playing bishop endgames, you never know what can happen. Just try to stay uh, alert on, on weaknesses and how you can get them back as soon as possible or get rid of them. And if g4 here, of course I can play uh, f3 and now even if my opponent would have played g3, again there's nothing to really worry about, I can simply play king g2. And I'm not threatening to take in g3, but uh, black will have to stay with the bishop on this h2 pa diagonal, otherwise that pawn will be lost. So this position should finish in a draw, but again, I played f3, and after bishop e3 check and h4, black is winning. Harika deservedly uh, won the tournament, because if you're not taking your chances, your opponent will. So that is something very important in chess, and that's probably one of those reasons why some players uh, feel frustrated after finishing um, a game where they think they were winning and they it just turned around completely, because not because necessarily that they lost, but because 
they had that chance of of making a change in their you know result and they haven't taken that chance and eventually they lost so you have to be understanding for that part um, really because such turnarounds are just killing anyway so here after this my opponent just beat me um, very nicely <laughs> there's no point to show that part anymore um, and I would really like to show you to finish up with a beautiful, I would say, finish by me. Well, it wasn't, it was actually in the middle of the tournament, um, round uh, 11, if I'm not mistaken, I played against Nana Zagnidze. Um, and this was the position that I got. Not a very pleasant position actually here for me. Uh, my bishop in b1 is badly placed. The queen in a1 is terrible. Um, she has maybe a weakness in d6, but really, how am I going to utilize it to my advantage? There's really no way. So this position was much worse for me. And I just played here bishop d3, thinking at least I won't be giving my bishop. I will keep that knight in a3 for some time, or if she is going to play some knight c4 at some point, at least, you know, maybe I can think of trading although it's really not a good idea maybe i would go just back to b1 um because my opponent's last move before i play bishop d3 was um uh, knight a3 so you know maybe i would just repeat and try to make a draw obviously here i'm just simply worse queen b6 can be played and so after bishop d3 my opponent blundered and i utilized this of course, to my advantage, and I haven't, I didn't let her go. It's rare, rarely do you get the chance to beat uh, an over 2,500 rated player. So it's definitely a really good victory for me, uh, psychologically speaking. Um, of course, I talked to to Nana before and after the, the game, so you know we're okay as people. You're you're always friends. I mean, not always, but you know you you can be friends with people before and now after and then of course when you're playing it's just chess so you have to to play as uh, strong as you can and um, what to do I was lucky this time so uh, what happened after knight c2 why is this move a blunder well because after bishop takes queen takes c2 what do I have this very nice move rook c1 I mean natural and not nice you know and um, Surprisingly or not, Black's Queen got trapped in my territory after Rook e3. There's no way for Black's Queen to escape. So that's why Knight c2 was a blunder uh, by Nana. Normally Knight c2 would be a really good move. Try to trade pieces and, and um, get the Queen and Rook active on the second and third rank. But um, somehow it was not in her favor because now even after Bishop takes e4, uh, for example, if rook c8, I have many ways to win this. I can take in d3 and just remain with... I don't need to remain with the queen up. I'm okay with just having a rook up, of course. Um, so here, um, she took in e4, trying to get more material for the for the queen, but um, I activated my queen, knight a5. I tried not to give her counterplay. Eventually, I actually gave her a little bit of counterplay, but... Um, um, Luckily for me, it wasn't much enough, and eventually I was um, able to win. There are many other beautiful games that I played, and all of them are actually interesting, and all of them I missed something, or my opponent missed something. It's blitz, what to do. You, you're always missing things. Uh, the important thing is just to enjoy it, have fun, and uh, try to do your best, I guess. Um, that's all from the uh, first world online women blitz championship i really hope you enjoy this stay tuned for more um games like usually tomorrow and be sure to check my um, website day-to-day -day, uh cooking of a grandmaster that's all folks see you soon bye